Hi, I'm here to share with you a helpful trick that saved me in my career and I think it's going to be helpful to you as a climate leader. It's all about a bathtub. Here we go. We'll start with the mechanics and the icons of stocks and flows. Stocks represent accumulations and are generally measured in units like gallons, people, tons, and so on. Flows change the level of stocks and must be measured in units per time. Gallons per day, people per month, tons per year, and so on. Here they are shown as an inflow and an outflow. The clouds represent where something is coming from or going to. Right now, that's assumed to be infinite, but that should be questioned. Calculus captures the same structure this way, first in an integral equation or as a differential equation. But it is more helpful to think of a bathtub. Flows are like the faucet and drain, capturing gallons per minute of water flow in and out. A stock is like the amount of water in the bathtub, an accumulation. The units show the important distinction between, between stocks and flows. These flows are measured in gallons per minute, and the stock is measured in gallons. And here's how stock and flow systems behave. Note, this may seem quite obvious but it'll matter later. If the inflow is always greater than the outflow, the tub will overflow. If the outflow is greater than the inflow, the tub will empty. If the inflow equals the outflow, the water will stay at the same level in what we call dynamic equilibrium. There are the basics. Stock and flows and their icons and the ways that you diagram them and capture them. Now let's look at some examples. Consider this stock, people engaged in the climate movement. This is all of us and lots of other people. Flows, numbers of people getting engaged every month or disengaging every month. And note, the inflow and outflow would be measured in people per month and the people engaged is just measured in people. Here's another. A stock, my cash, flows, income, and spending, measured in dollars per month. They don't just need to be countable, just quantifiable. Consider the level of hope that we can address climate change. It's a stock that's increased by building hope and drained by losing hope. Two very different processes. By the way, we get to think, what's a better way to address things? Focus on the first or the second. Another good example is my credit card balance. It's best to think about it as a stock and flow. Credit card balance is a stock measured in dollars, how much I owe the credit card company. Charging increases the balance. Paying reduces it. Both are measured in dollars per year. Let's ignore all the interest charges for a minute and imagine that my rate of charging is constant over time. And my rate of paying is also constant, but lower. I'm steadily charging more than I'm paying. The difference between what I charge and what I pay each month adds to the credit card balance. It adds to the stock. So the stock is growing each month. See the balance going up and up it's just like a bathtub with more water flowing in than out. But what if I try to solve the problem and reduce my charging, say 20% or so? Here's where it gets tricky. If charging goes down, as many of you probably know, the balance doesn't necessarily go down. If charging remains above pain, see the little gap here? Then we will add that much to the debt every month and the balance goes up. It goes up more slowly, but it still goes up. For the balance to go down and to get out of debt, I'd need to pay off more than I charge. See the charging line dropping below the paying line? Now, paying exceeds charging and the credit card balance goes down, just like a bathtub with more flowing out than in. That's how these bathtubs work.
That's how these stocks and flows work. Sometimes these diagrams can be chains of stocks and flows, not just a single stock and flow. Consider the process of creating power plants, electrical production, whether they be coal, gas, nuclear, wind, or solar. The first flow is initiating construction, perhaps measured in megawatts per year. Then the stock of power plants under construction, measured in megawatts. Then the flow completing construction. That builds up the stock of power plants that are in use, generating electricity. Then there's the flow that drains that last stock, called retiring. Because the lifetime of a power plant is quite long, they sit in this final stock, power plants in use, for an average of 30 years. So when we make an investment in a new power plant, we are locked into that energy source and its carbon emissions for quite a long time. So as climate leaders, we should be clear as we say to the world that an investment in a coal or gas plant, an investment in fossil fuel-based electrical production, is a long-term commitment to emitting carbon, not just a short-term decision. Okay, that's enough on the stock and flow concept for now. Let's talk about how this idea really saved me in my work. It was 2003, and I had been working with my friend Tom Fiddeman, who had been a graduate student with me when we were together. He had this model on climate change that was really cool, and I was showing it to some museum designers who wanted to incorporate it into one of their exhibits. I was making this presentation, and I hit a wall. You'll see. First, I showed the group this graph of global fossil fuel carbon dioxide emissions in a business as usual case from 2000 to the end of the century. We burn in this scenario more coal and more oil and gas, we chop down more trees, emissions go up and up and up. I next showed carbon dioxide concentrations. This is the amount of CO2 collected in the atmosphere. No surprise, it goes up and up as well. Emissions up, concentrations up, seems to follow. Then the exhibit designers asked for a scenario where emissions level off around 2030. They don't rise, they don't fall, they just level. Emissions would be well below the business as usual case. By the way, this would be great. We would reduce emissions a lot. So I went ahead and made the changes in the simulation, and I watched the results. Again, we looked to concentrations, and we saw the second line right here. Wait, what? What is this? Emissions level. See the flat line right here? But concentrations continue to rise and rise. They rise a bit more slowly, but they still rise. Uh, so, the people looked at me for an explanation, and I muttered something about the long lifetime of molecules in the system and this and that, but they looked really lost, and it didn't go well. Wah, wah, wah. Then I immersed myself in the work of Professor John Sturman at MIT Sloan. In several of his journal articles, he encouraged us to think of the climate change problem as a stock and flow problem or a bathtub problem and it shed light on my awkward, stuck moment with the museum designers. He said, Think of CO2 in the atmosphere as a stock, an accumulation measured in parts per million. It's 400 parts per million on average in 2014. This is equivalent to the amount of water in a bathtub. The inflow is emissions, gigatons per year of carbon dioxide, mostly coming from burning coal, oil, gas, and land use change. The outflow is net removals. A large amount of carbon dioxide gets sequestered in plants and soils and absorbed into the ocean. Note that a large amount of CO2 is moving from the atmosphere to the plants and the oceans, and another large amount is moving back in the opposite direction. 
This flow we're showing right here of net removals captures the net flow from the atmosphere to the plants and soils and oceans every year. All right, let's go back to me standing in front of the museum designers with the model. The emissions had leveled in 2030, but those concentrations kept going up, much to my dismay. Emissions are an inflow to the tub, here, just like this faucet, and shown on the graph here in this line, measured in gigatons per year. And the outflow is net removals, shown here in this line, and indicating the flows of carbon dioxide into oceans, plants, and soils. This bottom graph shows the stock or accumulation of CO2 in the atmosphere. The accumulated CO2 is like the water in the bathtub. Look at the top graph, which runs from 2000 to 2100. Look what's happening in 2020. The inflow looks to be just about double the outflow, about 42 gigatons per year here, as opposed to 23 here. So we've got a bathtub with double going in relative to going out. Emissions from burning fossil fuels is about double what's being removed and sequestered. Every year, with 42 going in, 23 going out, the bathtub adds 42 minus 23, or 19 gigatons per year. So what is that bathtub level doing? Of course it is rising. Look at the bottom graph in 2020. You can see CO2 in the atmosphere increasing in 2020. The slope is positive. See it going up? Up, up. Makes total sense. Now let's look at ha what happens when the emissions level off in 2030, right here. Removals remain down here below emissions. So we capped emissions well above removals. We have a bathtub with much more water flowing in than flowing out. Look here at concentrations. Of course CO2 in the atmosphere doesn't level off like it thought it would. Of course it's still increasing even though emissions are level. More is flowing into the tub than is flowing out. I finally had a crystal clear explanation for the museum designers. And you will have one for the world. And of course, that's the whole point here, right? Empowering you as climate leaders. So we have a really important point, at least about what won't work to address climate change. So, what do we need to do to actually stabilize carbon dioxide levels? Well, think about it for a second. If we have a bathtub with double going in what's going out, all right, there's a bathtub double in going out, how much do we need to reduce the inflow in order to have it stabilize? Think about it. How much? Well, about 50%. It would at least a 50% reduction. So I ran the next scenario with a significant reduction in emission. Let's see what happens. See the reduction of, em of emissions here? It goes down and down. Now look closely at this spot, 2065, right here. The inflow and the outflow to the bathtub are equal. Emissions equal net removals. So the CO2 concentration right here is level. It's just like a bathtub. And look all here and see the removals. We need to reduce emissions more than 50% because for several reasons, net removals would actually decrease. So the summary of the main points about the carbon bathtub are these. First, a bathtub is a really powerful way to think about and to explain to others the dynamics of emissions, concentrations, and net removals. It's a good way to talk to people about things. Secondly, if all we do is flatten our emissions, we're going to have concentrations going up and up and up, temperature up and up, and more and more bad impacts over time. Third, if we really want to stabilize carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere, we're going to need to significantly reduce emissions on the order of 80% by 2050. And the last point, we can do it. So that's it for Stocks and Flows. There are two main things hopefully you've just gotten, 
an understanding of another building block of systems thinking and system dynamics, stock and flow thinking and stock and flow diagramming. And secondly, some insights into its application in the climate and energy system. All right, spread these messages far and wide. Go get them.